Today we're going to be working on one of my favorite shotguns, the Browning Auto 5. This is an excellent, excellent gun, very well made. Uh, discontinued, as you all know here, back uh, uh, not too long ago, but uh, there's still about probably nearly 3 million of them out there. It's one of the finest guns ever made. All machine parts, it's uh, really no comparison to the modern um, guns that you'll find out there nowadays. Uh, one of my favorites, this is a Sweet 16 I just purchased this past week. Uh, we're going to be in the, rest we're going to be restoring this gun back to like factory new. It's not really bad, but they sell for me much better if they're restored. There again, we've talked about this restored thing. Uh, a restored gun that's been done by the wrong guy is worth virtually about nothing. Uh, but when they're done and done uh, correctly, done right to where they look factory new again, it brings the value right back. These are my best sellers, Sweet 16s. I just can't hardly keep enough of them in stock. Sometimes we uh, get a little carried away on them and uh, put uh, uh, fancy wood on them. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, when they need to have the engraving touched up, we go a little extra on that and kind of you know make it a little better. These guns were engraved at the factory and uh, they were just hammered out one after another. My friend Angelo B said that when he started training at Browning uh, to be an engraver, uh, they started him uh, engraving trigger guards on A5s, and that's all he did was hundreds and hundreds of trigger guards to start on A5s. Then pretty soon he went to A5s. Of course, we know Angelo nowadays is really, uh, from there he graduated up and does uh, the uh, high grade stuff. But um, this is what he trained on was uh, the Browning Auto 5. All right, on these barrel extensions, they're threaded onto the barrel. This is your barrel extension. And they're very, very tight. If one is cracked or broken, you're going to really need serious stuff to get it off and replace it. You probably won't have the equipment. At Browning, we had a special wrench that slipped over the uh, extension end. Big, long, heavy, massive thing. And this would be put in a, uh, a vise, a barrel vise, blocks that are con you know, shaped to the barrel. And uh, uh, then the, the broken extension could be removed and uh, the new one put back on. But there again, they're really, really tight. So that's another one of those things we talked about. Yeah, you won't be able to do that at home. You'll need me or Brownie or someone if you have a cracked or broken extension. Uh, these, uh, this is your ejector. This is a sliding ejector in this gun. We might do a video later on on how to modify a short chambered 16 gauge to uh, two and three quarter. That'd be an interesting video. Um, and when you do modify them, they have a fixed ejector. When you have to put a sliding ejector like this in, but. That's for another day, so let's get into our receiver now. A little bit and kind of grab it with my trusty cutters, pulled out the rest of it. Then we have removed the uh, those items. Now let's go ahead and take out our trigger pin here. Get the trigger out. Then our trigger plate will be torn down completely. Be careful, don't lose your little detent ball there. Uh, they want to roll out and get lost. Uh, this gun is uh, numbered on the guard, so when I blew it, I won't have any trouble finding where that gun goes. So we're all torn down, we're ready to blue. Uh, we're going to step over to a vise here in a little bit. I'm going to show you something that happens on occasion. On occasion, and I don't see many of them, uh, the uh, magazine tubes can break on them. They break right at the receiver where the threads are. It weakens it a little bit. All right, we're at the vise. We're going to remove a magazine tube. Show you guys how to do that. That's uh, this is something, as they say, don't try it at home. You won't be able to try it at home most likely because you won't be able to unless you really build the right tools. Now, here's a, here's my homemade barrel block for my uh, uh, magazine tube. I'm going to clamp that on the magazine tube. Here's one. Uh, here's an early tube that was made at Browning probably 40 years ago. This is what they were using then. I have been down there lately. I assume they probably still use the same thing. This is just an oak block. Uh, they were a little fancier down there. They milled some... Uh, uh, slots in this block and put the bolts through it. They, they got a couple pins in it here and those pins are to keep it from dropping down in the vise. Uh, some of those guys down there had more time to spend on this stuff than they needed to, but that's okay. Um, this is a 16 gauge block. We won't be using that today. We're going to use my homemade block. Uh, now, we're going to start here. Here's the, here's the important critical thing on removing magazine tube. Okay, I want to talk a little more about uh, my uh, Sweet 16 that I'm working on here today. Uh, this particular gun uh, has the, uh, the action tube on it. It's all in one piece and it's all there and it's not broken. Uh, I want to tell you something about these action tubes. This is a common thing for these things to break. 
I got this old 12 gauge receiver. That's one I just robbed the magazine tube off of here. And I want to talk to you about these action tubes. You'll get these things on occasion where these action tubes will break off. Now the reason they break, the early action tubes on the old standard 12, standard 16 were threaded. Here's one here. These are kind of rare and hard to find. But a guy brought some in the other day and I bought them from him. Even though I probably won't use them because don't, they don't hold up well. See, when they, it's like anything else, when they thread something, it has a tendency to weaken things. It has a tendency to weaken. And uh, threaded action tubes have a tendency to break off. That's common, very common. I get lots and lots of them in a broken action tube. We replace a lot of them. This particular 12 gauge gun here has the late, later model, newer style tube. And for some reason, it's loose. I was able just to pull it out today. The solder was not holding well. This is uh, the new style tube, as you see, it's not threaded. Well, I want to show you something we made up in a shop the other day. It's just kind of good for instructional purposes and uh, something that you might find of interest. We made a cutaway of a Browning Auto 5 and uh, got it back in the milling machine and made a bunch of cuts in it where you could kind of get in and see how certain things work. Uh, I slipped a barrel into it and we got some dummy rounds in here. Uh, here's your uh, magazine. Uh, Here's your magazine uh, follower C, and uh, you know we cut out. Here's your magazine spring. We cut the form in half and what have you. Um, kind of gives you an idea of how the the A5 works. It's a long recoil system. When the gun is fired, of course, this barrel and all comes to the rear. Now, what stops this? Uh, uh, what stops this bolt? The travel at the rear is the carrier dog. Um, it, it, that stops this gun from uh, the barrel from coming forward uh, when it locks the carrier lock, dog locks into the breech bolt. Now, when it does that, it holds the uh, the, the bolt to the rear, and it lets the uh, 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 barrel come forward. When it does that, the barrel comes forward, and as it comes forward, this ejector on the barrel hooks the empty hull and brings it out the right side of the ejection port. Well, we got our little early Sweet 16 laid out on the bench here, ready for assembly. I've uh, pulled a few parts out so we can inspect them. We've talked about things before. Uh, this is an early uh, narrow rail locking block. Uh, whenever you get one of these guns in and you go to put it together, one needs to always pull that out and check it. Of course, now to get it out, you have to remove the, the uh, firing pin retaining pin here, pull out the firing pin, then rotate this locking block up and out of there. And then check this rail right here. This rail, as we've talked about, is a narrow rail. They're the ones that have a tendency to break off. And let's, here, here is a wider rail. Uh, you can see the difference. This is a new style. Uh, Browning Company, when they have a, a bit of a flaw in a the gun, they will go back and correct it and, and beef up parts or whatever it takes to uh, improve on them. So this is the wider rail. This is a narrow rail. And it's still there and it's good and you know the theory is around here if it ain't broke don't fix it. But we want to pull it out and inspect it. So now we're going to rotate this gun it has back been in. Uh, we've uh, polished the uh, magazine tube. You want those polished very nicely because your friction rings slide on there. And uh, you don't want to get all your gouges and bad stuff out of that tube. So we polished this, this tube nice and shiny and bright. And, got any uh, galling of it or what have you that might be in it. We have uh, blued this gun. It was fairly rough. Uh, we touched up engraving. We uh, replaced the borders that were lost. Engraving's kind of been touched up a little bit. Some of the uh, uh, liner work in the leaves has been done. This is an early gun and the uh, cartridge stop, the magazine uh, cut off and all these parts are held in with screws. Now the later models use roll pin. I kind of like the roll pins better. Um, it was an improvement as far as I'm concerned because these these screws go in to the receiver and it's a blind hole. On occasion one of these will rust into place and they're really tough to get out. Uh, sometimes it makes it impossible to get them out. Whereas a roll pin, you can always get it out. You can take a roll pin punch and uh, you can always drive a roll pin straight reason, on reason sometimes a Browning Auto 5 will go full auto on you is if this screw here is loose. 
Why don't you put it again very tight? They say if that screw loosens up, they'll go for a lot. I don't know. I've never seen one do that, but they claim that's the case. Now, next thing goes in is our hammer. Now, this is the old style hammer with a roll on it. Browning, stop putting that roller on that hammer. I don't have one here in front of me. Anyway, they remove this roller and there's just a spur on that hammer. Well, it's all fine and good, but what we found is that when this roll pin is not here, the spur on this hammer, where it comes into contact with the mainspring right here, has a tendency to gall. And sometimes that uh, gun, when the hammer goes, retracts down, is down, locked down, it'll stay that way because it's galled. And I've seen that many times. Hammer retaining pins in place. Now, what I'm talking about is when this gun is cocked, if you don't have that roller on there, the ones that have just a spur, I've seen them get down into a position like this, and it, it has gall on the mainspring. All right, we're going to put our trigger plate in our receiver now. Now, you always put the trigger plate in at the front. Put the front of the trigger plate in like so. And then take the smaller pin, trigger plate pin, it goes in the front, and put it in position. Get your trigger plate in there. Line up the hole, put it in. Should pop right in. This one's sticking. Shouldn't have to take a mallet or anything to tap it in place. But I don't know that's got a burr on or something. It's going in tight. Shouldn't go in that tight. Anyway, now you cannot at this point just push this trigger plate up in position. It's not going up in the position where it belongs because it's hitting on the carrier spring in there. So what you have to do is bring your bolt back just about a quarter inch or so. This stock they refinished. Uh, uh, down in our wood section the other day, just a beautiful set of wood. Beautiful set of wood. This is all factory. I didn't replace this wood. This just happens to be a, a Browning Sweet 16. It has just some real killer fiddle back in the wood. They don't all have that. Most of them are pretty bland and plain jean, but this is a good one. Go through our website and click on the Guns International link and you'll see this gun on uh, the internet next week. Uh, you guys are going to have to go easy on each other. Everybody's going to want it. It's going to it's going to go for quite a bit of money, but that's the way guns are that have nice figure in them. They're just a, a real cherished uh, item. People love beautiful figure in wood, and i got to admit, I'm a sucker for it myself. Now, when I put this stock on, we talked about this. Uh, these two screw, this, this big screw here, this is your stock retaining screw. Uh, that's When that's out of the gun, and you go to put this gun, this uh, wood on the uh, receiver, you need to tap that stock up on because they usually don't just slide up into place and you'll have to put it on the bench and tap it on the heel of the stock here like that and that'll drive that wood up onto that receiver what you never ever want to do is tap on the toe of the stock that's very weak and toes break on stocks all the time so when you tap that wood into place make sure you hit it on the heel of the stock back here you drive it on then you can go put your retaining screw in and your lock screw so anyway, we're going to test fire this A5. We've got a, uh, I like to feed my rounds in from the bottom. I can tell you, you know, if it's going to work, it'll probably work for sure. If it feeds that up in that chamber nice and neat, yeah, that looks good the way it feeds that up in there. Now, this, uh, these rounds that I'm test firing with here today uh, are uh, fairly heavy loads. I have set, set it for heavy loads. I'm going to test fire and see. Now, if it doesn't cycle with the heavier loads, well, then we'll, we'll change the rings. But I always recommend setting your A5 for heavy loads. So I came out and loaded this A5. I had it set for the heavy loads. I test fired it. It didn't work. As you can see, it just didn't cycle. Not a big deal. You just, whoop, whoop, sit, we'll set on the light loads, which is easy enough to do. Take the cap off. Hold on. I have my son Nicholas stand here next year. He's just kind of somebody here to kind of hold things so I can, I can, do things. Uh, pull off this bronze piece and uh, the metal friction ring. The reason this gun doesn't cycle is because these these rounds I'm shooting don't quite have enough snort to make it work. But yeah. But it another reason we put this new spring in. 
You know, sometimes you put a new spring in. Down at Browning, I, one of the guys, one of the gunsmiths kept a box of used springs, and if he had a gun that wouldn't cycle with a new spring, he'd slip in a used spring. It was a little weaker, and they cycle. We can probably make this one cycle by just setting it up for light loads. We've talked about this before. You take your metal ring, drop it, bevel down, drop it down at the bottom. There again, you can put it in your pocket if you want to lose it, but this is just storage area down here. a little heavier load in there you might have to go back and set it for heavy loads these loads I shot weren't real they were kind of an intermediate range they weren't real heavy they weren't real light but that gun cycled perfectly very mild on the recoil because I've got all the new springs in it and that's a fine gun right there well I enjoyed making this video for you guys and gals out there uh, it's always a pleasure to deal with a shooting fraternity. I, I love firearms. I've been, been part of my life for a good many years. I love the outdoors. I love hunting. And I'm not a very good trap or skeet shooter. And when it comes to clay targets, I'm just not very good at it. In fact, I'm not really a good shot when it comes to pheasant or anything else, but I love, I love the sport. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We enjoyed making it for you. Uh, we've got some more coming up in the future. We're getting ready to do a baby 25 pistol. It's going to be interesting. Very small, intricate little gun. That, I think you'll find it interesting what you got to do to take one apart and put it back together. And one of my favorites is coming up. Uh, we have a Browning Trombone 22 pump rifle. One of my favorites. We've got a rough one that's come in the shop. And uh, we're going to restore that and make that gun like new because they're hot sellers. I can't keep them in stock. They're a wonderful little gun. So more videos on the way and hope you enjoyed what we've done so far. And we'll get some more coming your way. <laughs>